Welcome back. This is Building Metabolic Fitness Part 7. I want to take it back to the chart that started us off and talk about what to expect as well as timelines. So that top red line is August of 22 and the bottom red line is August of 23. So there's a year between them and that's a big move. So there's been a clear improvement in what's happening internally uh, when I'm on the bike. And you can see that gradually with each of the lines, the quarterly tests as I roll through the year. But I want to tell you, it did not feel like that. In other words, it wasn't until July, probably July, where I was like, you know what? I'm really handling my big days better. I'm not getting as tired and I'm able to do some proper training. So there was, and, and if we roll it back, you remember I started late spring of 22. So it was really more than 12 months before I felt a shift in my capacity to train. And that's an important thing for you to remember because when you're using this protocol or really any protocol, most people quit or give up before their protocol has a time a chance to work. And what I used to point my athletes at is 500 days to get them started. You know, in my Rich Roll podcast, we talk about a thousand days, but I used to tell people, look, make no decisions in terms of how things are going with our plan until you've been doing it for at least 500 days. That's enough time for you to see the beginning. And it's important for you to remember that it really is just the beginning. As you stack these years, you'll get a deeper and deeper fitness and better and better performance. So let me just, we in part two, we ran through my September 22 tests. And this is just the detail on my August of 23 test, just so you can see how things shifted. Now, again, started with the bike test. And you can see now, my once I start exercising, my baseline actually gets under one millimole. And that's something that you'll see with very well-trained athletes. I am not elite by any stretch of the imagination anymore, but my mitochondria are well-trained. And I had an early breakfast, 4.30 in the morning, drove my daughter to the airport for a swim meet, came home, jumped on the bike, and did this test. And it went really well. It was, uh, I felt good and my performance was good. Another thing I want to point out about the test, baseline was 1.1 and then I went down from baseline and then kind of had this long baseline and it's really nice to see that. Now these are 10 minute steps, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. I was going for an hour before my lactate popped. Don't be afraid of long warmups. They're valuable for your mitochondrial development. Now, get off the bike. I had a bottle of sports drink. Baseline is a little bit higher. Maybe there was a little bit of a reaction to the sports drink. Maybe it was leftover lactate from going to 255 watts. Don't really know. But when I get on, I do a 15 minute gradual build. So I start walking and I build the pace up to 630 per K pace. And you can see my lactate was 1.3. I'm still at baseline there. Now, here's the really encouraging thing. A year later, when I start running, easy pace, my lactate goes down. I'm much more efficient at running. It was a great shift. And then the test goes, I touched the skin, my skin, when I took the sample at four minutes and 30 seconds per K pace. And that's with a little note there says touch. And the lactate concentration in sweat is higher than the lactate concentration in blood. So I may have contaminated. So immediately after I did another test and I was 1.0 at 130 beats. Now, don't, if I really wanted to dial that point in, I would do some longer steps and additional spot checks on the lactate to try and test that. The main thing I wanted to see in this test was really just to understand where's my easy pace, like how high is that first lactate threshold? And for me, five minutes a K is enough for my goals. This was done just prior to my ultra swim run event. So 
Let's wrap up just by telling you what lactate meter I like. I like the lactate plus meter. It's done by Nova Biomedical. You can sample at the tip of the strip. You just spear the surface tension of the drop of blood with the strip and it'll just soak that blood right up and you do it really carefully. And if you're like me and you need reading glasses, you want those on when you're sampling. Never test the first drop. I test the third drop. I, I wipe it away with dental gauze and the first two drops and then I test. And the nice thing about this is you get a reading in 13 seconds. And if you have a suspect reading, you can very quickly take another one. On that test I showed you where I touched the skin, wasn't sure if that was a legit reading, I go back very quickly, take another sample. And that's super convenient. So this meter costs a little bit more than some of the alternatives on the market, but I think it's worth it for you because you'll get better data. You'll also be able to use less strips because you're able to sample from the end. So thanks for listening. Next time, we're going to close out the series by talking about my plans for the upcoming year. Had a lot of success last 12 months in terms of making myself more fit. So what's next? I'll tell you next time. Thanks for joining me.